This is Aaron Levine, LG Insurance, with another episode of the And Insurance podcast. And before the end, we're going to start talking about some commercial real estate stuff. We have Danielle Brunelli with us today. Thanks, Danielle, for joining me. I really appreciate it. It was great how we got uh, connected the last couple of weeks. Um, Danielle is, what's your official title? I'm the president. The I'm president, yeah. sorry, of <laughs> RJ Brunelli and Company Commercial Real Estate Agency uh, here in the state of New Jersey and beyond. So thanks for, thanks for joining me. Um, sure. Give me a little bit of background. We want to go quick into the background, learn a little bit about you, and then I want to talk about what's going on in some of uh, the New Jersey commercial uh, real estate landscape. Sure, thanks for having me. Um, our company was started by my father, Rich Brunelli, 45 years ago. Um, and uh, we've always specialized in retail. Um, I joined the company when I was 18. I got my real estate license while I was going to Monmouth University. Um, so it was about 23 years ago I've been doing this. Uh, my first client was Salvi Beauty Supply. Um, and then it just kind of got from one referral to the next, which was which was nice. You're like, you're a New Jersey commercial real estate powerhouse. <laughs> I mean, you and your company, you drive up and down Route 9 and Route 35 and wherever else, and that RJ Brunelli sign is almost everywhere on all these, you know, retail shopping centers, right? That's that's your focus is these, you know, the retail strip centers. Yes, like Big high, and profi small. high profile. Yeah, I mean, not so much. We try to really concentrate on larger shopping centers um, and not so much, you know, little things here and there because right. we want to make sure all of our time and effort goes into, you know, the right properties and that we could service every landlord properly. So we, don't, we try not to overstretch ourselves. Uh -huh. um, so you don't see our sign on every property, but... Just enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just enough. I remember... <laughs> You know, so back in 2008, you know, we're roughly the same age. Maybe I'm a little bit older than you. Um, I had my real estate license while I was going to graduate school back at Monmouth. I was doing some real estate. I worked for an investor developer in the area. So, you know, there was some times where, you know, our companies had crossed paths. Your sister was in the business a little bit, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years yeah, she ago. She made a Whole Foods deal in like a month. And then, <laughs> then she left us. <laughs> I made my money. I'm going to teach yoga. Life is good. Uh, congratulations, Lauren and Andrew, on your new baby. Um, she's beautiful, and good luck with having two kids in the household. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's funny, and I hated real estate. I had to get out of it. But now I love real estate on the insurance side of things. I love helping people look at leases, and then I get excited when people sign new deals and, and get, to, get to open up. But the real estate environment in retail has been kind of weird the last couple of years. Right. With COVID and people not going out, the smart ones pushed forward. Uh, the other ones got left in the dust, you know. So where where are you seeing things? Where were things in 2019? You know, what are you seeing today? Is Amazon taking over the world? Are we going to shop anywhere else? How do we help the small guy out? Give me some insight into what's going on in your uh, in your yeah. world. So um, it was really interesting. I mean, it's sad, um, obviously, like some, a lot of businesses to go out of business to, what, during COVID when they were shut down. Um, but some, uh, like Gregory's Coffee, for instance, that I, um, I represent in uh, Central Jersey, they had to shut down all their locations in New York. Um, and then, it, you know, even New York was shut down for even longer right. after it even opened. How do people live? They need coffee. How can you shut the coffee shops down during COVID? It's crazy. So, um, but during that time, he called me and said, Danielle, I want to do drive throughs in New Jersey. So some people oh. just took the opportunity and started focus focusing on other things. Um, fortunately, I represent Dollar Tree. Um, they were able to stay open during COVID. Okay. So they did really well right. during COVID. Um, anybody that was able to stay open, the Lowe's, the Walmarts, you know, obviously, you know, the corporate guys, they did well, uh, it, which was really a, a shame for the mom and pops. Right. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the restaurants, a lot of them came available and then they got filled right back up with other people that were ready to go again. So sure. it was it was pretty crazy. Last year was a super busy year. Um, and uh, in regards to Amazon, we're going to see a lot of Amazon supermarkets opening up um, pretty soon. They're all under construction. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how 
you know, our, our local supermarkets do. So it's going to be Amazon. Um, you walk in the door, you're chipped up, you're ready to go, and you walk out the door, right? We don't have to yeah, check out Yeah, basically you have a cart, and anytime you put something in your cart, it just rings up automatically. You don't have to wait in line. There's no people. Um, but I, ha- I kind of lo- I kind of love the concept, <laughs> but I'm like, I, you know, can somebody local do this? I think I think Shoprite. I've heard that they are going to be doing okay. it. Yeah, so I heard they're going to have the same basically software. Because those checkout lines at Shoprite suck. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. They're they're horrific, and you know, if I have if I'm forced to go to the supermarket, it's my least favorite thing to do. Yeah. Once in a while, I help my wife, but Shoprite I think is the worst with their lines. It's just it, they're so crowded. So if they can get the in and out tech going. It'd yeah. Be incredible. Yeah. No, it'll be interesting. And I'm, I'm interested to see like w- what kind of product they're going to be able to sell. You know, is it going to be better or worse or right. cheaper? I, I, you know, they're opening, they opened in California. I haven't been to one yet, so I haven't been able to experience it's it market yet. research. It's a business expense. If you go to California to go <laughs> shopping at Amazon, I mean, you know, you uh, have president I did go to Arizona title, so to, you to can, visit one of my uh, raising canes. So I'm, okay. I'm working with raising canes in New Jersey. What's raising and canes? Raising canes is a chicken finger concept. They're okay. super popular. Um, there's caniacs throughout the world because there's about 600 locations. Caniacs. caniacs. That's what they call themselves. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. And, um, yeah, they're, they're like a Chick-fil-A. I mean, that's how big they are. Okay. Yeah. And um, what are they coming near us? So we're in, we're, you know, we're sitting in Monmouth County in Red Bank, New Jersey right now. When are we going to see Gregory's Coffee? Yeah. And when are we going to see Raising Cane's? Well, hopefully in Hazlitt. And uh, they'll approve a site plan for Gregory's Coffee because we have okay. a lease sign there. With a drive through Uh-huh. Okay. On the way to the parkway, it'll be perfect. It's it's such a beautiful build out. I'm not it's driving a Hazlitt. Really p- okay, so we're also <laughs> we are trying to come down in uh, Shrewsbury area. Even they don't allow drive throughs so we're trying to look next uh, town over. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're, we're we're working with Gregory's throughout Central Jersey, okay. but Canes, um, we have a, a, a lot of targeted markets, a lot of deals in the progress. Um, I can't mention any of them are signed yet, but they're almost all this disclosure stuff. <laughs> Um, um, so, dr- I mean, in our pre-conversation, uh, it's drive through everything, right? Yes. You're seeing everybody wants a drive through There's limited drive through space. We have strip centers. You can't put a drive through for everybody. You know, what's going to happen to those interior spaces if everybody else wants to have a drive through We're just going to have pad site central and we, like yeah we are i mean that, that i mean that, i was if, making if, a joke if, but if i the guess ta- if the ta- <laughs> yeah, really you're going to see a lot of pad sites popping up in shopping centers so long as townships uh, okay. uh allow them and it's just at the, the the during covid right the restaurants just realize how much um more business they get by having a drive through i mean like okay. they, it's like half their business like i'll drive down you know the route 35 route 36 circle area where there's that Starbucks in the Michaels Plaza, the drive through line will be 30 deep or you can park and walk in and be in and out in 90 seconds. I mean, it's incredible. People just want to stay in their <laughs> Sometimes car. Right? It's so stupid. They're just listening to the so, end insurance podcast um, is what's happening. So what's and happening also with the drive throughs is the restaurants are figuring out how to lay it out okay. so that they have a double stack. <clears throat> they even have like a three lane now. Oh. So you, if you go to a Chick-fil-A, you'll see how they do it. That's okay. how all the restaurants are going to be doing it pretty soon. Um, so it does go much faster. Actually, Raising Cane's, the one reason they were so, so successful is because they literally only sell chicken fingers. There's nothing else <laughs> you can get. It's Great. chicken fingers, um, like a piece of toast and fries, right. and that's it. You that's have no it. decision to make. And you're Simple in and menu, out. It's show quick. up, yeah. in and out, they and do, they can just keep cooking they do a single huge product volumes, all day. And incredible. their product is awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. smart. You know, it's something to think about for a lot of different restaurant style concepts, you know, and then you got some restaurants doing the ghost kitchens for uh, the the delivery aspect of it through the third party delivery apps, um, you know, putting different things on the menu. But simple is better. We don't like to make decisions. We like to just show so up and have things done for us. One funny thing about uh, Gregory's Coffee that I just learned about, um, Greg so he just opened up in Paramus on Route okay. 17, and he's on the end cap in a, in a strip center, so he has a drive through um, But most of his lo- new locations are going to be freestanding with drive throughs okay. kind of similar to a Starbucks. But um, So Greg has software 
where like your car pulls up right. and it knows the, sees the license plate and it knows what you're going to order. Get out of here. So That's then awesome. he, he already gets the system like ready to, he's like, are you going to have your special today? And it says your name on a right. screen and it, it knows the customer and yeah, it's it's really cool. That's that's incredible. I mean, we're creatures of habit. When we pull up, we're gonna probably order the same thing right. over and over again, right? right? Especially when it comes to specialty coffee. If Greg needs a new insurance agent, you know, <laughs> I'll introduce tell him, you. To tell him, him. <laughs> tell me, you know a guy that is good at handling multi-unit uh, restaurant operations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's even the pad site conversation. You know, one of my clients, Tommy's Tavern and Tap, they have the two concepts, the Tommy's and the Tio concept. They've got a bunch of pad site locations going on, freestanding buildings. They just opened their biggest one in Edison in front of Top Golf, where they just had a TO open about a year before. Yeah. And now they just announced Mount Laurel in front of Top Golf is going to be another freestanding Tommy's and freestanding TO location. So, cool. you know, it's better visibility, right? Especially when we're talking highway visibility to have a pad site instead of being tucked back and being, being in line. So mm -hmm. I guess it makes sense, but it's. This drive through Chipotle, Chipotle thing is, is only, I think they're only really doing deals where they can get a drive through now. They call okay. it a Chipotle lane. Chipotle. That's not a typical drive through. That's more okay. like people, I think, are so used to now ordering in, through the app. Right. And they just pick up. So oh. they don't have to walk inside. They, so it's app based, not yeah. a traditional drive through. Yeah. Shake Shack's doing the same kind of thing. I mean, it makes sense. A, like, uh, I have an app for, you know, my quick serve, um, especially when my kids are in the car. I give my wife the phone, they place the order. And then we go in, instead of me having to order, you know, two kids meals with all these specific things on them, it's, I mean, the app has everything preloaded. So right. it's easy. We don't want to do it. We want to, I order pizza at home. I order through an app. I don't pick up the phone and call the pizzeria anymore. <laughs> you know, I you're think, just, you're, you're, holding, you're holding on to it. <laughs> you're holding on to, you know, I, that uh, conversation. I, I mean, obviously, you know, every generation is going to get more used to, you know doing everything via apps and digital you right. know it's just going to become that way 100 percent. so um, we've got drive-throughs and we've got big boxes what about everybody else everybody else um <laughs> so i mean services really are the other you know category expanding i, I represent european wax center forever okay. massage mv but you, i'm still I, last year i did six european wax center deals wow. they're still okay. yeah um there's companies out there like that are, you know, yoga, stretch labs, Bavia. I've you know, seen the stretch lab kinds. advertisements. Are yeah. they coming? Are you seeing yeah, well, some locations pop up? You've done um, some deals? I'm working with brokers who, you know, are looking for locations for them. Okay. I think there's one opening in uh, Marlboro and Route 9. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more service oriented businesses right. expanding today. Not, Not so, so small much retail ones that can get killed by Amazon. Right. So. Um, discounters are still expanding, okay. you know, um, like I said, Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, um, Big Lots, Burlington Coat, um, Marshall's Home Goods, TJ Maxx, right. they're expanding everywhere. And then medical. And medical, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's funny because I just did a Hackensack Meridian deal in uh, Eatontown. They took about 40,000 square feet, but it okay. just seems like all of these bigger entities are buying out the smaller doctors. They're doc so mm -hmm. they're basically taking all of these doctor's offices and putting them under one roof, right. under one brand. And so all of the major companies um, and hospitals are doing that. Right, and opening up centers where it's convenient to get to them, yep. right? Yep, yep. Um, so with respect to that Hackensack deal, right, you said it was 40,000 square feet who pays, right? There was a building there, right? It was an old Toys R Us building. Who pays for the facade facelift lift? Who pays for the interior? The What's the landlord on the hook yeah. for? So the land in that specific deal, the landlord delivered like a, a warm shell. So the okay. landlord did have to do this. The, well, I think actually the tenant did the storefront. Okay. I, it's, it depends on every deal. Every deal is different. Every different. It's all but it's nice to see a, f a facelift on an old building, right? That yeah, building's well, been there for how many years? Yeah, no, I agree. Hackensack definitely wanted their look. I think Hackensack did the uh, facelift. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the landlord just really delivered a shell. Um, and, the t and, and I think they got TI, tenant allowance improvements. Okay. Um, so that the tenant can build out the inside of it. So there are there any more small landlords anymore or now we're you know we're talking big no, he's box actually, stores. He's a small landlord okay. I mean, but he's you know been around a long time right. the, the Dweck family. Okay. Um, we've known them for since my dad started in the company. Okay. So um, so he's you know he's not a big time there, there's actually not so many 
there's there's some like Kimco National Realty and Development. Mm -hmm. There's not um, in Jersey. There's there is a lot of owners that are still right. local. Um, yeah. So when it comes to operating shopping centers, so to speak, right, with respect to the landlord, landlord tenant relationships and the leases, where are you seeing leases going? Are they continuing to get more complex? Are things coming back to earth? You know, what are you seeing with respect to those negotiations now? Um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> they've, they've, they haven't really changed much for me. I mean, right now, um, you know, I guess the, the tenants maybe have, there's always like a time when the landlord has the upper hand and the tenant has the upper hand. And right now I feel like the tenants maybe do a little bit be okay. uh, because there's might be a little bit of space out there, you know, per se, a little bit higher vacancy rates. Are there higher vacancy rates? I saw, you know, Tesla's opening up locally. I mean, we've got a lot of great new occupants coming in our area. Yep, I guess I two years ago, yep. there was a lot of vacant space. Yep in our immediate yeah. you know i look at the route 35 yeah. route 36 corridor as as home base for for, yeah. for what i see there was so much open space um now we've got tesla chick-fil-a coming in right the party fair yeah. just opened like uh what's that wine store that huge giant yeah total wine total wine just opened up you know yeah. 15, no i agree with you it's definitely tightened up over the like i said last year was just a super busy year for everybody right. i mean um, yeah, so I, I agree probably this year the vacancy rates are going to be much gonna lower. Be and so what, what's going on with Mammoth Mall? What is, what's going on? What's an update? Do you have an update? Do you know anything going I on over there? I don't really know. I don't no. have an update. Because um, <laughs> there's I so think, much great stuff know, going on around it. Yeah, I mean, I know, you know Hackensack Meridian, the reason they wanted to get into that location real quick is because they wanted to beat out the other um, Got it. brand. I, I think it was Robert. The, um, the Barnabas. Yes. Right. So I, I think they're still going there. I don't, I don't know. Okay. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know too much about the Mama's Mall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, at some point, I guess it's got to be demolished, <laughs> or and it's going to be a you know drive-through heaven. Like you know, people have they set up these food truck food courts. Now it's just going to be drive-through <laughs> food courts. You're just going to drive around from place I mean, to place and yeah. stay in your car. Yeah, I mean, right holiday now, lights through the different restaurants. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mentioned to you also how it, right now the, all these gas stations seem to be available. Right. Like maybe they don't look available today, but they're available. So there's a lot of redevelopment happening. Okay. Um, I think our government wants these like old gas tanks taken out of the ground, sure. um, which is great. Um, so it's gonna that's gonna create a lot of pad site opportunities okay. uh, for restaurants to open with drive-throughs. Um, yeah. Some of them are a little small, so you might need to acquire a piece next to them. Right. Uh, but we are going after all of those gas stations okay. for you know whatever use. We represent a car wash uh, okay. called Tidal Wave, so they want those kind of properties, um, you know, like at a corner, at a light type okay. locations. Easy yeah. in, easy out. Yeah, get your car cleaned makes makes a lot of sense. You know, it's funny. I have a uh, good friend. They have a service related business for these gas stations, so they're the ones that do the tank testing on a consistent and regular basis and get you know do the requirements because obviously the pollution is a huge deal when it comes to this. And then if you have an old gas station site, getting all your, you know, your, your reporting done to, mm -hmm. to have a clean bill of health so you can rebuild something else is a, yeah. it's a lot of work. And you handle that if you're representing, you know, landlord um, or tenant the landlords, in that? The, 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 the companies that own those properties okay. are the ones that are responsible for those okay. cleanup. So anybody that I'm representing is not going to be responsible for anything environmental. Okay. Um, yeah. So like I'm working on a Luke oil site right now and Luke oil is going to hopefully sell the property and okay. they're going to, after the contract is signed, then they have to clean up the property within 90 days or something okay. like that. Um, yeah. So a lot of these companies that own the property, the land, and they, le they lease out the gas, like they, they, they basically, let's say it's Exxon, right? Exxon owns the property, but right. then they lease it to like a tenant. Okay. So they're really just landowners. Okay. So they are, they don't want to sell. They want to ground lease. Smart. They want to keep that land and they right. just want the highest and best use for that property next. Okay. Take out the tanks and then just become a landlord. So that's really what's going to happen with a lot of them. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So you mentioned a lot of great tenants, great new businesses that I think are coming to New Jersey and coming to our, you know, immediate area in our in our tri-county region 
Um, but you also do landlord representation as as well. Which side of the, the, the fence do you like better? The tenant side is always better. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody always wants a tenant. You it's know? more fun. Yeah, it is. Except, I, I mean, it is great when you represent a great shopping center. Like right. uh, the Manalip and Epi Center I've worked on for many years. Uh, my father did the Wegmans deal back in the day. Um, and so I did a little European Wax Center. I put in Crumble last year. So what is a, this crumble? Oh my gosh, you got to taste them. They're amazing. What, what is this crumble cookie crumble. that people are like supposedly waiting online for? Since I, so I did the it's one. It's a cookie. In, yeah, I, I represented the franchisee that went into the, um, the location in Seaview Square Mall. Okay. Um, and they 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 were like the number one sales in the country. Is that a drive through also? Or no, no, it's not a drive through. But it should be. But you, it is an app. There's an app okay. where you have you could order them, you know, and then you could pick them up, or you could have them delivered, or <laughs> Um, it's actually pretty cool because, like, if you have like clients or whatever, you can right. just upload all your contacts, okay, and they'll get cookies sent out to them with your branding, with your name of your company on it or something. So it's all just yeah, it's re- a really good idea, and the cookies <laughs> are freaking amazing. I had I to stop have to going drive, there because I, I literally went there, there two next. days in a row. Oh my god! I mean, <laughs> I know. Now, I'm like hungry for a cookie now, you know, but obviously it needs to be one of these crumble cookies. Yes, it has to be a crumble cookie. <laughs> I just yeah. had my birthday. I should have gotten some crumble cookies for my birthday, but I'll have to, you know. I'll tell send me. you a text for your <laughs> gift. Send me, send me a link. I'll go get. I'll have some some cookies delivered. It sounds <laughs> sounds awesome. What else is What else is new and exciting? You shared some great opportunities coming to our area. Some great insight on on what we're gonna see. Um, all these shopping centers filled up. It's gonna be exciting. I mean. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in, in, in your industry, in your space right now. There is. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see when these Amazon supermarkets open up. Um, um, so is it going to be like a supermarket or is it going to be like a Walmart? Like, or we don't know yet. No, it's more of a supermarket. I think okay. it's just like produce and uh, yeah, it's not going to be a Walmart. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think Amazon did play with some other concepts, but I don't. I'm not sure how they're doing. Okay. They're more like regular retail stores. I think one opened up in Wayne. Okay. I haven't visited it, so I don't know. Okay. But I'm sure they're going to be coming out with more concepts. Sure. I mean, they are like industrial-wise. It's insane. Like it's insane. Right. They are buying everything. Right. Industrial properties, like the the rents have gone up like crazy. The prices of uh, it actually they're they're buying old retail buildings. Okay. So like uh, um. I heard on Route 17 in Paramus, there is a shopping center at the inter- like one of the main intersections, Ridgewood Ave and, and Route 17, and um, it, it, it was being bid on, and uh, one of the bidders was telling me, you know, would you want to do Raising Cane's here, et cetera, and then I found out this week that an industrial <laughs> property owner bought the property. I mean, it's, it's wow. a great retail property, but okay. an industrial, I mean, they're just buying everything. Wow. So it's, yeah, it's pretty That's crazy. interesting. Yeah. That's all, you know, more and more home home delivery and drive through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess just being maybe Jersey, you know, just because right. we're near the ports. Um, I don't know. It's, it's Yeah. I mean, listen, there's a lot of good areas with reasonably good access to the major highways and, and intersections, especially up in that n- area. It's super congested. So yeah, I know Amazon built a out. big one in Edison kind of okay. recently. And then we've got um, the one in Neptune that's under construction, yep, yep. right? The old and golf course. And that's in a retail location, right? That was the... Uh, the golf course and driving range is there. Oh, no, but they, they took a lease. They took a space, too. Um, it may not be open yet. Um, and where Costco is. Where Costco, okay. Was, yeah. Well, not where Costco is, but in the same shopping in center. The same they took, sh- okay. like, a big space there. So they're, they're going to have an Amazon warehouse there. Wow. They took a former Sam's Club in Mount Olive in North Jersey. Okay. So I think, you know, landlords are just doing what they can. Um, whereas, you know, when I first got into the business, landlords would never think about putting industrial or <laughs> medical into their location. It was $3 a foot back then. I Yeah. I mean, now it's, yeah, they can pay more than a retailer right. could. So. so are you seeing landlords also, you know, trading and selling, buying and selling? Or are you seeing a lot of landlords are, are sitting foot right now? With respect to um, properties. So landlords in Jersey, usually we have, they, they weren't really sellers in the in the past, okay. but today there's, there, I mean, I think with um, interest rates being so low and with cap rates being so low, we have seen a lot more selling going okay. on. Um, we'll see what happens when the interest rates creep up. Okay. Uh, last year was, a, you know, 
big year for our company. Per, uh, we did a lot of more sales than we usually do. Um, and yeah, it's great for, for the business and every, people have to do 1031. So if you sell a property, right. then you got to find another property for them to buy. Um, so that's, yeah. A lot, lot of exciting stuff going on. So Danielle, thanks so much for, sure. for hanging out with me today, talking commercial real estate. You know, I'm going to drive around looking for more drive through pad sites. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have a drive through concept and only a drive through concept, nothing else, you can reach out to hey, Danielle Brunelli. Just out kidding. To me for anything. <laughs> if you have any cool concepts that you want to bring to uh, Monmouth and Ocean County or anywhere in New Jersey yeah. and beyond, uh, because her company does, rep does some representation in other states um, up and down the eastern seaboard, they'll be happy to, to help you out. And for all of your insurance needs, uh, feel free to contact me at any time. So, Danielle, thank you again. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>